going on, comic book gang? My name is John C, aka Year of the Collector. This past week, I got the opportunity to read a comic book before it was released. I was tasked by Nerd Initiative to review Ultimate X Men number seven by Peach Momoko for Marvel Comics. That was pretty exciting to say the least. I'm a huge fan of Momoko and I've been following the Ultimate line along since the beginning starting with ultimate invasion you can check the playlist in my channel if you want to find out more now with that being said i want to go into spoilers for each number seven and talk about the theories that i have for the mutants in the 6160 earth or better known as the new ultimate universe if you have not read Ultimate X-Men number seven or Ultimate number two or Ultimate Invasion for that matter, go read them and then come back because I will be spoiling a few things. You been warned. Since the beginning of this universe, we have seen a limited amount of mutants. Back in 2023 in Ultimate Inversion two, three and four, we got to see four and only four mutants colossus magic and omega red aka the rasputins and sunfire accompanied by his personal guards viper and silver samurai what these four mutants had in common they were all part of the makers council a secret organization of powerful people in charge of this world that was crafted by the maker himself. If you're not fully caught up, the maker traveled to this new world and basically stopped the age of heroes. He personally traveled through time to intervene and stop people from becoming the heroes we know in the 616 universe, like catching the radioactive spider that was supposed to bite Peter Parker, which would have given him the powers of Spider-Man. The Maker, on the other hand, allowed only certain people's destinies to progress how they were supposed to, and those are the ones you see here in this room. Why, do you ask? Well, think about it this way. It is said it takes a village to raise a child. And now that he raised this world into what he wanted it to be, the Maker can be everywhere at all times. So... He assembled this council to oversee different parts of the world. Each member or set in the council is responsible for managing a part of the world. The part of the world we're going to focus here is Southeast Asia, a land called Hinokuni or Land of Fire or Land of the Sun, depending which kami you're reading that interpretation from. Hinokuni is controlled by the mutant Shiro Yoshida, aka Sunfire, along with his personal guards Silver Samurai and Viper. Enter Peach Momoko's Ultimate X-Men. This series takes place in Hinokuni. There, a young girl named Hisako Ichiki has her mutant powers activated to protect her from a car accident. By the nature of her powers, you can say Hisako is the mutant known as Armor. As you can tell, this is not your mom's and pop's X-Men comic book. This series leans heavily into Japanese culture, art style, and folklore. The second mutant character we introduced to is Mei Igarashi, aka Maystorm. This, I believe, is a new character to this world, but her powers seem to be inspired in those of Aurora Monroe, aka Storm. Storm actually makes a cameo in this series when Mei tells Hisako the story of how her powers manifested for the first time. Slowly, other mutants like Shinobu, Shadow, and Surge are introduced to the series, but all in all, it's just a handful of them. You would think in a mutant comic book series, you see more mutants. So, where are they? In issue number 5, we have Nico Minoru. 
sharing some rumors about a secret group that calls themselves Homo Superior. Yes, you know that to be mutants. This cult believes that Homo Superiors are the next step in humanity's evolution. So here's where I ask myself, are the mutants congregating in secrecy to hide from the maker or his council members? Well, if you go to the Ultimates number two, Steve Rogers was just rescued from the ice and he asked Tony Stark to get him caught up with the world events, more specifically the history of the former United States of America. This world's history isn't completely changed from 616 history. Steve learns how World War II ended about the same way, right? The maker's first public appearance in Challenger in John F. Kennedy. Steve learns about JFK's demise and the maker's confrontation with Galactus. There's even footage about this world's Punisher. But the one we're going to focus here is the civil rights protest, where seemingly mutants were protesting for equal rights and equality for all. Seeing there were mutants at one point and there's not any in the present time, I assume the maker had killed them or just erased them from existence like he did all other heroes. I mean, it makes sense why oppress mutants and take the chance of having them oppose you when you can just eliminate them before they even exist. I say this because there's evidence the maker actually took out a mutant off the table already. In the free comic book day issue, Spider-Man slash Ultimate Universe, the heroes traveled to one of Maker's secret storage facility. Um, yeah, there's a lot of this going on in this world, right? The Maker intervened, uh, changed a lot of stuff, and he kept, you know, records, logs, uh, bolts of all this stuff that he changed. Uh, OCD, anybody? Well, inside, the Maker kept trophies of the heroes he took down or just stopped from opposing him. We see recognizable characters like this world's vision, Black Bolt, Kazar, and the Sentry. Pay close attention to this trophy here, a metal skeleton with a nameplate that says Weapon. I think it's safe to infer this is Weapon X, aka James Howlett, aka Wolverine. So my theory was the maker took out all or most of the mutants in, in this world to make his life easier. Well, in Ultimate X-Men number seven is where I got my questions answered. We get a closer look at the secret cult of mutants in Hinokuni, here in this place called the Temple of the Revealed X. The mutants gather in mass to hear the teachings of this character called Maester. In his speech, he calls the mutants the children of the atom. Now, Behind the scenes, Maester receives the visit of Viper, personal guard to Emperor Sunfire. You can tell by Meister's sweat, he's pretty shook to have Viper present at his temple. The way Viper carries herself and the nature of the conversation, among other things that take place in this issue, it's clear that the children of the Atom is not hidden from Sunfire. He is in charge and has a set of expectations on the cult. Viper is not here just to reinforce Sunfire's influence in Maester. She came down to clean up after Maester's recent failures. I'm doing my best here not to spoil the entire comic book because I really want you to read it. This issue started a new arc and it is giving me the feeling that this is where everything comes together. So back to my theory. The mutants are not hiding from the maker. It's in fact the opposite. Sunfire is not just aware, but actively influencing the cult. Therefore, it's safe to say the maker is also aware of them. Full disclosure, the members of this cult might not know about Emperor Sunfire or the maker's hands in what they do, but their leader does. So yeah, there goes my first theory. 
safe to say it's proven incorrect nonetheless this is lots of fun for me trying to know what to what in this universe speaking of trying to know remember the weapon x trophy well if that's james howland who's going to be the wolverine of this universe i have a theory that is still standing now bear with me in ultimate x-men number six there was a character in the background of the last page that might answer my wolverine question if we take a closer look this seems to be an homage to the popular cover of uncanny x-men number 251 by mark silvestri and dan green that's wolverine hanging on that x right we can all agree to that but the question here is which wolverine is this one is it akihiro or is it laura in the 616 universe akihiro is the son of wolverine and his japanese wife with the japanese influence in this x-men book akihiro seems like a safe bet right but if you look again whoever that character is it's wearing some sort of rag cross over the chest area maybe this is a female character maybe this is laura kinney laura formerly known as x23 was part of a top secret program that tried to recreate the original weapon x she eventually escaped the program and long story short she is now a hero and carries the mantle of wolverine i have no doubts Peach Momoko is more than capable of doing her own interpretation of any Wolverine as seen in her comic book covers prior to this Ultimate X-Men run. Even though Akihiro sounds like a safe guess, consider the following. Momoko's X-Men squad is an all-girl cast. Hisako aka Armor, Mei aka Maystorm, Natsu possibly aka Cyclops, Kanon aka Psylocke, Nico Minoru, and Mori. If I was to follow that pattern, the logical choice would be Laura Kini as the 6160 Universe's Wolverine. And that is my theory. What do you think? Does my theory hold any water? Did I forget anyone else? Is there other Wolverines I'm not aware that might fit better in this universe? Please let me know in the comment section. That's all for now. Hopefully we get some answers sooner rather than later. And with that being said, I want to thank you for watching. If you stay around this long, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You have a blessed day and remember to read more comics.